Our next topic today is corn nutrient deficiencies. How do we identify them and how are we going to do anything about them? Can we fix them for this year? Well, you know, when it comes to feeding our corn crop, there are a lot of different ways it's done. Some farmers like to put everything out in the fall and then plant the crop in the spring and hopefully they'll be good for the whole year. Other farmers like to wait till the spring, put it all out right before planting all time. All the fertilizer. All the fertilizer or at planting time. And others like to spoon feed that a little bit here, a little bit there as the crop goes to try and give it the food it needs right when it needs it. Okay, so where we want to start with this is you first have to look at how many nutrients is your crop overall going to use. And when we're talking about a corn plant, just to produce the grain only, not even counting the stover. If you're gonna raise a 200 bushel crop, you've gotta have 76 pounds of phosphorus and 60 pounds of K2O potassium. It's a lot of nutrients and very few farmers in the country are fertilizing at least that much. And then if you've got soil problems, like let's say your soil pH is a little out of whack. Let's say it's a little high or a little low. Let's say that you've had some flooding. Let's say you've got other issues going on in the soil. Even what the fertilizer you do have in the soil might not come into the plant. So it's very important throughout the growing season to do some plant tissue analysis where basically you pull leaves off the plant, send them in for analysis. But beyond that, you want to walk in your field and see what the crop looks like overall. So for example, when I stepped into this field today, now granted we're in the extreme northern part of the United States and this is very late planted corn and they had a very late frost right here actually this morning. When you looked at this at first, you thought, oh no, it's way short on nitrogen as it's coming out of the ground. But as you look a little closer, you'll see really had nothing to do with nutrients at all. It had everything to do with frost damage. There's a lot of those things that you just can't out guess. But when it comes down to feeding crops and noticing on different leaves, how that crop is doing, if it's getting the right amount of food, there's a couple terms that you should be familiar with. Mobile and immobile in the plant nutrients. Now, nutrients that are mobile within the plant, they'll move around. So as the new growth comes out on a corn plant, it's always at the top. You'll see new growth at the top. If it's a little short in something, it'll pull those nutrients from the lower parts of the plant to feed that new growth. So the new growth gets the best food. For the mobile and, nutrients. And the lower leaves on a corn plant, well, they may start to show deficiencies because, well, they did have plenty of nitrogen, but now they have to give it up to that top part of the plant because that's actively growing. So the mobile nutrients that we're talking about, just real quickly, would be things like nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And when we talk about immobile nutrients, those ones stay right where they're put. They're building blocks that are going to stay there. So once they're put into a leaf to build that leaf, they stay there. So if a plant runs out of them, as it's building that new growth, hey, I don't have enough of this nutrient, well, guess what? It's gonna show up at the top of the plant that it's short. So examples of immobile nutrients would be things like micronutrients and sulfur. So if, for example, you saw yellowing on the top of a plant, then you would know it's probably a sulfur deficiency or one of the micronutrients. If you see a yellowing on the lower leaves of the plant, it's probably nitrogen or potassium because those nutrients, nitrogen and potassium, are mobile. But you see, these things can get easily confused, Brian, like you just said right there. Well, nitrogen and potassium, the yellow leaves on the lower parts yeah, of the plant. Yeah, they both cause yellowing. That's nice, but a lot of times when a farmer looks so at a nice, field, but <laughs> when, a, when a farmer looks at a field and he says, oh, okay, well, I know that it's either nitrogen or potassium because my bottom leaves are yellow, but how do I tell the difference between the two? Well, with yep. nitrogen, that starts out at the tip of the leaf and it moves down that mid rib. So down the center vein, and oftentimes you'll see kind of a V-shaped pattern as that nitrogen progresses down towards the main stalk of your corn. To contrast that with potassium deficiency, that'll be yellowing on the outside edge of the leaf. So when you put these two things side by side, you'll see, oh yeah, there's a dramatic difference there. Now the other thing is we talk to farmers where we'll walk into their fields late in the season, we'll see potassium deficiency or nitrogen deficiency, and what does a farmer often say? Oh, that just popped up this week. And he'll also say, uh, well, my crop is just firing now because I'm short on moisture. No, you're short on potassium or you're short on nitrogen and that's why your yield's suffering. So too often as farmers, we blame not having enough rain or not having the rain at the right time when in fact, the real problem is a nutrient deficiency. Well, the other thing there to tie in with that moisture brain is how do plants take in most of their nutrients? Well, they pull it in with water. And when you're short of nutrients out in your field, your plant starts pulling in more water, hoping that it's gonna pull some of those nutrients in. So when we talk about into drought situations, you're really gonna have trouble if you're short of nutrients. That's gonna really exaggerate the impact of that drought because now your crop has pulled in lots of excess water that it really didn't need the water. It's, res it's respirating that water back out. It was just looking for nutrients. Okay, so now let's get to the million dollar question. You walk out in your field late in the season and you see it's 
deficient on nitrogen or phosphorus or potassium or whatever nutrient and you say, oh, I gotta do something, and you throw some money towards fertilizer then, did you save your yield? You're gonna get no response at all. Well, you might season. get some response and you might get a color change, but you've already lost yield. It's too late. So yeah, you might get your money back out of it, maybe, but a lot of times you don't. You're just wasting your money. You gotta make adjustments now for next year. So you wasted a year, you lost a year, and that's where we like doing plant tissue analysis because very often we can find that that plant has nutrient problems before it shows up. What I always tell people is by the time you see a nutrient deficiency, you're way far gone. I mean, you're not just a little short, you're way deficient. So the big thing is you have to make adjustments to your program. Don't wait till you see some leaves turning color out in your field to be your trigger. Monitor those nutrient levels in your plants all through the season, and then each fall change your plants. You get to harvest, you say, you know, my yields were a little disappointing. I noticed that I was a little short in zinc and boron in my field. Change that. Add a little bit more micronutrients into your program and you can do a good job. It's not necessarily going to cost you money because one of the things that we found doing the plant tissue analysis is we were excessive in nitrogen. We were actually putting too much on but we were a little bit short in potassium and no, some of the micronutrients. No, not a little, we were way short <laughs> done. And so here again, I come back to, you just wanna make sure that if you're seeing nutrient deficiencies in your, in your corn or soybeans or wheat or any crop, uh, that is so far gone. You've got to make major adjustments, major changes going into next year. And at least during the season when the plants are small like this, do plant tissue analysis. If you're running short already, yeah, you can put some on now and do something about it. But when you get later in the season, there's nothing you can do. Well, if you see our Weed of the Week while you're out looking at those cornfields, there is something you can do. We'll give you a step-by-step -step process of getting this weed under control coming up later in the show.